a group of scientists from the Department of Engineering and Physics in University of Lancaster in the UK has wrote up a very interesting research paper around two weeks ago, uh, January 5th to be specific, uh, about this new thing, a novel idea that's called Ultra RAM. And boy, it is just uh, too good to be true. You know, if this have been put into production and we get our hands to it, this is going to be a huge game changer. How about we jump into it and discuss? Welcome to the Back Engineering Show with your host, Hussein Nasser. And this technology, Ultra RAM, in order to talk about it, we really need to talk about what a RAM is and then what a flash SSD NAND memory cell based storage is because it kind of combines the best of these two words okay and uh you can skip into uh the meat of this video if you're interested but i really think you should just stay and just understand the the power that we have here what do we have today let's start with the ram it stands for random access memory and we say random is because the cost to access address zero in the RAM is equivalent to cost of accessing address F, 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 the last one, you know? And if you read the first address and then you read that last address, the cost is negligible, it's nothing. It's, you immediately go to the value and pull that byte or bit, right? So that's, that's the power of a random access memory. And it's absolutely fast. So that's that's the power of the RAM. And when I mention RAM here, I'm always referring to the dynamic RAM, effectively, right? Which uses the technology behind the scenes, uh, which is the capacitors, right? And uh, the, the limitation of capacitors is if you you always need to keep them charged. You have to keep them volatile. That's why when you turn off your computer, you lose your RAM. It lives for a few milliseconds and after that it just your your data just goes away that's the limitation of the ram but other than that it's very powerful it's fast i can access a single byte unlike disk right or rotating disk which i have to access a block of data because of the cost really the cost to go there and just fetch a single byte just not worth it so everything is designed to in the storage hard drive to pull a large chunk of sector or page in case of SSD, right? So that's the power of the dynamic RAM, really. But we can't use this to persist. We can't use RAM to persist data. We need to turn off things, right? Yeah. Power eventually just get lost, right? And uh, we need to persist it, storage reasons, right? So we can't use RAM to, unfortunately, to store things. But it's beautiful for placing temporary data, working on it in memory, hash tables, all these beautiful data structures. We need it in memory for this beautiful fast access. But we need to store it, right? For the longest time, we had hard drives, right? Which are these magnetic moving parts, which goes and it's have this, you know, the needle that goes to a specific place and says, okay, read. And then if you want to go to another place, it has to rotate. And this is a physical activity, obviously. Activity is like going to exercise. <laughs> You're moving. And when you move, it takes finite amount of time. And you're bound by the laws of physics in that area, effectively. And that's why it's slow. So people invented the concept of SSDs, solid state drives. That uses flash and the NAND technology behind it. And I can't speak much to it because I'm not really well versed in this, you know, the lower level electronics of this. But I, the, the way I understand it is that it is composed of a memory cell that you can persist and it will remain even if the power goes away. Uh, and and uh, the, the beauty of this is, let's say, the limitation of this is just when you build these memory cells, the cost is just so high that you need to kind of uh, put them next to each other. So you start organizing memory cells together, you get the concept of a page, and then multiple pages get you the idea of a, of a block, right? And here's the thing, 
if you want to store a bit in this memory cell, you apply certain voltage in it, right? And, and this is called basically this, uh, around it's around 7.5, last time I checked the paper, and right? 7.5 voltage just to store a value in the SSD, right? On this single memory cell. So that's why they don't allow you to write on a single bit because it's very expensive, right? So the minimum writable unit in an SSD is usually called a page. And that changes based on the manufacturer, right? And a page is a really collection of these memory cells that we talked about. And you can effectively write a page at a time. So you apply the 7.5 voltage and you say, okay, I want to write this memory cell becomes one, this is zero, this is one, this is zero, this is one. And you start writing these values effectively, right? And uh, 7.5, well, sounds really low, but it is in the higher scheme of things, it is kind of high when it comes to electronics, right? And here's another limitation. When you want to erase, you know, just remove all these values, that's another rule with the SSD. You cannot erase a single bit, right? You cannot erase a single page. You have to erase a whole block, which a block consists of many pages. That's the rule that the SSD have. And guess what? When you when you want to erase this, you have to apply even a higher voltage, around 20 volt, just to erase this block of data in the storage, right? So what is the problem with this? Just low voltage. It's like, yeah, high voltage and low voltage. Why? What's the problem with this? Well, such high voltage really screws up the electronics in that SSD and and it does something with the durability of that page that's why we in SSDs there are limited shelf life on a single page if you write and erase and pro called program and erase a certain amount of time this page eventually dies right and every SSD comes with a specific number of erase program cycles that you can do before this page dies right and uh, with this limitation, obviously, there is so much stuff that the software is doing to avoid this big limitation with the SSDs. What does it do? It does this uh, hacky thing that's called garbage collection. And, uh, and the idea of garbage collection is like, okay, if you as an application, you're writing always to the same file, always to the same file. If you don't do anything, that file always lives in the same location, right? So imagine you don't, you don't do anything behind the scenes. You're... <laughs> In this file, you're just in that page, you're writing to it and you write something else and you write something else. In the SSD, it has to write a page, you have to erase it first. Forgot to mention that. So you erase and then write and you erase and you write and then you erase and then write. if this you erasing the same pages all the time. First of all, it's slow because in order to write, you have to erase your page. Second of all, that page eventually will die. So your SSD will eventually die, right? That page will be unusable after a while. That's why garbage collection comes in the picture and something called wear leveling that kind of balances these pages with uh, the kind of balances these writes, right? So, okay, when you're writing to this, mm, you wrote too many times to this. Let, let's, let me put your write right here and I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna swizzle something behind the scene that you don't even notice, right? The page that you're writing to the operating system will stay the same, like page seven. But behind the scene, I'm gonna change the page ID, right? Uh, it's, it's not really a page, it's a block. It's called the LBA, logical block addressing and the, uh, the mapping between these. And this is the job of the flash translation layer. So much complexity have been built because of what? Because the SSD pages die after a while. These memory cells die after a while. Why they die? Because we apply so much power to it. Why? Because we need to. That's that's how they are built. So that's that's what we have. This is the state of the art as of today, right? And obviously, a lot of people are doing a great job to even do a better job in the NVMe, the non-volatile memory uh, express people. They're building great specs to, at the software level at least, 
when I say software at the driver level, at the device level, to take advantage of of SSDs in a, in a and put some uh, work on the operating system level so that they can work together to work around these limitations of SSDs, right? So we have limitations on RAM, right? And the RAM, they lose power, you lose your data, but it's fast. And the SSD, they persist, and they are fast as well. SSD also, you can you can safely say it's random access because you can access any page uh, in a zero cost almost, right? Because it's it's unlike the hard disk where you can just have to rotate to greet something. It just it's a flash. It's immediately you can you can address anything very fast. The problem becomes at the software stack where we have this logical block addressing, the flash translation, where we have mapping between the physical blocks in the SSD and the physical pages, and the mapping between the logical pages, and you have to read and you have you need sadly enough you need ram dram in the ssd to operate it which is expensive which rises the cost of the ssd so we have limitations in the ssd we have limitations in the ram and those guys says what is the fundamental problem that we have they dare to ask this question the brits dare to ask this question and boy they found an answer right Obviously, I don't understand any of the electronics behind them. I'm going to read this stuff, but I'm really interested in what the, the problem they solved here, right? right? Let's read the abstract, right? And then discuss a little bit more. Okay, so here's the abstract. Ultra RAM is a non-volatile memory, non-volatile, which means you can remove the power and it will persist. With the potential to achieve fast, ultra low energy, ultra low energy electron storage in a floating gate accessed through a triple barrier resonate tunneling heterostructure. This is Greek to me, right? All this stuff that is at the electronics. If, if there, we have any electrical engineers and electronics engineers that might give us some hints about this, but I'm, I'm not really interested yet to go at that level but here's here's what it gets really interesting here its implementation is reported on a psi substrat a vital step towards cost effective mass production so they already implemented this in a in a way such that it's cheap to manufacture right because that's they had in mind sample growth using mole molecular beam epitaxy what the heck? Epitaxy comm <laughs> commences with depositions of an ALSB nucleation, la nucleation layer to seed the growth of a gas buffer layer, followed by the 3V memory, blah, blah, blah. blah. Here's, here's what is interesting. So this is all not, not interesting for me, but here's the part that's interesting. Fabricated single memory cells show clear zero one logical state construct after less than 10 millisecond duration program and its pulses of just 2.5 volt, that low voltage. And uh, furthermore, the combination of the low voltage and small device capacitance per unit area results in a switching energy that is orders of magnitude lower than the dynamic random access memory and flash so it's faster than ram and it's faster than the ss the, the flash itself the flash which is what, what, the, what the ssd is built on extended testing devices reveals retention in excess of thousand years right how did you guys test that that's a, that's a, i'm gonna leave that to the end how did you know it's gonna last 1000 years <laughs> right and the deg degradation free endurance of over 10 to the power 7 program erase cycles this can be tested right the retention mm, i don't know about that <laughs> how do you, did you leave an ssd with an ultra ram for over a thousand years and you saw that it, it didn't uh, it didn't lose the power Ugh, i don't know yeah, surpassing very recent results of a similar uh, GA substrat. All right. Yeah. So what that abstract tells us is, hey, we did we use some magic to lower the energy used to program this memory cells. 
and as a result i was like i was like okay when i first read this let's be honest when i first was like okay ultra ram low memory it's like okay who cares low memory i was gonna i'm gonna save if i built an ssd with this much uh with ultra ram uh, is it gonna save me what one hour two hours of battery life okay nice but i don't really care much but the power is not really in the low power that doesn't make any sense the real power here the real beauty is the use of the low power actually have a ramification effect and the entire stack guy you have no idea how game changing this thing is let's talk about this so if i only need 2.5 volt to program and erase remember in the ssd in the flash current technology you need 20 volts again i'm gonna reference all all my findings i'm not making anything for my ass here right i, I read some of this stuff right 20 volt to erase that kind of hurts it's gonna it's gonna f up your memory cells if you apply 20 volts after a while eventually it's gonna die right 24 2.5 volt eh. It's gonna die i guess eventually but it's not as fast as if it was like 20 volt i'm <laughs> flying to that thing right so it's just, it's way better obviously but yeah that makes the cells last longer if it lasts longer then you don't really need to worry about the garbage collection right amplification uh was that the wear leveling and you have to work around the limitation of the uh, disk itself you don't need to do any of that stuff and as a result you have built a powerful device right so it has high endurance so you, they tested they put all the poor work on this thing they over 10 to the power 7 and the endurance when i say endurance here it means how memory cells hold up right after a while do they still keep working or just like the flash it dies after a few program erases right and the other thing is just the, the retention which i have my doubts on retention is plug uh, unplug everything and leave it right for a day right and then read the data is it is the data still there <laughs> that's effectively retention you need to make sure that if there, you don't have any power you can still read the data effectively right and uh, they claim that it reaches thousand years maybe i believe they extrapolated that but you don't know about that that's that's the only you know limit that's the only you know doubt that i have i have a feeling that this is just too good to be true there must be something bad that is just lurking in the darkness and this is gonna yell at us eventually uh, from what i read they tested this for seven years i believe seven years uh i'm uh, yes i don't think it's enough to research a technology for seven years that that's just obviously the the seven years just to get to this point they need a long time to actually manufacture test it in real life against a real workload and obviously guys when we have something like that ultra ram we should never unleash our current architecture on top of it we will just basically not take advantage of it enough because we need to rebuild this entire thing from ground up you need a new uh, access layer right key value store uh nvme key value command set is an attractive model that i believe is a very a promising right if we build that around this then it is it is going to be a guy but but having blocks and all this garbage w w collection and where we don't need any of that anymore maybe uh, time will tell but we will will have to know but i think this is a, a ground um, groundbreaking game changing technology but i have still have my doubts so i'm not gonna put my hopes up but i love this good job good job you guys uh from uh 
Good job, though, professors from the University of Lancaster in UK. And guys, what do you think about this? Do you think this is uh, promising? Do you think this is, eh, we've heard talks for about persisted RAM for a long time. This is not, not something any, any different. I'd love to hear your comments. Let me know. I'm going to see you on the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.